Voters headed to the polls Tuesday for a special congressional election in New Mexico's 1st District. Democratic State Representative Melanie Stansbury is facing off against Republican State Senator Mark Moores for the traditionally Democratic seat covering Albuquerque. Deb Holland vacated the seat in March to join the Biden administration as Interior Secretary. President Biden won the district by 23 points in 2020. Democrats are trying to hold on to the seat after a disappointing shutout in a Texas special election last month. As Politico reports, quote, the New Mexico race shows Democrats are still grappling with how to handle continued GOP attacks on policing and public safety. For more on that, let's bring in Stephanie Murray. She's the author of Politico's Morning Score newsletter. Stephanie, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. So tell us about the campaigns that these two candidates are running and how both sides are using this race to test party messaging. So this race happening in New Mexico today um, is sort of a test drive for midterm messaging for Democrats and Republicans ahead of 2022. Uh, Melanie Stansbury, the Democrat in the race who's, you know, favored to win. This is a, a district that typically votes Democratic. She's been, you know, kind of pairing herself with President Joe Biden um, and, you know, all of the COVID relief that he's done, while Mark Moores, the Republican, has really been hitting her on her support for the BREATHE Act, which is a proposal that was written by activists calling for police reform. Uh, Moores has kind of taken out some of the more extreme portions of the bill, which calls for, uh, you know, emptying federal prisons in the next 10 years and tried to, you know, say that Stansberry wants to let the Unabomber out of jail or something like that. And those are things that she disputes. So she's been trying to kind of distance herself from that. But I think what it distills down to is that Democrats still uh, have trouble responding to Republican attacks on, you know, defund the police and police reform. And so this race will be a test of that and that messaging. And although Stansberry is expected to win, all eyes are going to be on the margin tonight. Uh, so, you know, by how much she wins, assuming there's no upset, which would be a big deal. Uh, Deb Holland won the seat by 17 points a few years ago. Joe Biden won it by, a I believe, 23 points. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, if Democrats turn out uh, in that way for Stansberry tonight. So let's talk about Texas. On Monday, Democrats killed a Republican-backed measure that aims to tighten voting restrictions by walking out of a late-night state legislative session. How is the state's Republican governor reacting, and what does this mean for the future of that bill? This was the legislative, uh, you know, equivalent of pulling the fire alarm, what happened in Texas. The Texas legislature and the governor's office, all led by Republicans. And so this voting bill, which would have put a bunch of new restrictions on voting by mail or voting in person, um, you know, early voting, drive through voting, um, really restricting, uh, you know, voting options that way. Democrats walked out of a legislative session, um, which made it so they didn't have a so they didn't have enough members to vote on the bill, and the session uh, was ending for the year. And so uh, time ran out and killed the bill. Um, you know, Republican leaders in Texas are livid. Uh, they, they've threatened to, you know, stop paying the legislature. They say that they're going to bring lawmakers back in for a special legislative session this summer. And so although this bill was killed for now, uh, the fight in Texas is certainly not over. Well, a convention for followers of the QAnon conspiracy theory took place in Dallas over the weekend. Who attended and what are some of the political narratives that were being promoted at that event? Um, you know, President Donald Trump's former national security advisor, Mike Flynn, was probably the biggest headline out of that QAnon conference. Uh, as you discussed earlier in the show, he suggested that uh, the United States could have a, a coup similar to what happened in Myanmar. Um, and, you know, this comes on the heels of the, the January 6th Capitol riot, uh, where, you know, supporters of Donald Trump and, uh, you know, some who support the QAnon conspiracy theory, obviously, you know, uh, uh, broke into the U.S. Capitol. Uh, Flynn has tried to walk those comments back, saying that uh, he, you know, his words were twisted or misheard. Um, so, you know, he that was, uh, you know, the biggest thing out of the conference, I think. And then also Sidney Powell, uh, Trump's elections uh, lawyer, was there as well. Um, and, you know, this is not going away. Uh, the, you know, the 
believes that Trump has the unfounded beliefs that the election was stolen. Uh, there are audits going on in Arizona and in Georgia, one just wrapped up in New Hampshire, uh, challenging the 2020 election results. Uh, so all of these threads that, uh, you know, were kind of from 2020 still have not wrapped up in 2021. Yeah, I'm just curious, Stephanie, do you know, I mean, how well attended was this particular event? Um, you know, obviously there is a level of enthusiasm among this group, which does, as we pointed out earlier, represent a small part of the Republican Party. But, um, you know, a lot of them are very, very obviously vocal in their beliefs. And there is a question about whether or not this is a movement that is growing in size. Is, was it a well attended event, do you know, to, um, this weekend in Dallas? Yeah, it was significantly attended and significantly covered. Um, and, you know, the QAnon conspiracy keeps, it, you know, a small but vocal group that has a pretty significant hold on the party. Um, Trump advisor Steve Bannon, uh, somebody who has floated, uh, you know, a number of different conspiracy theories on his podcast, it's become kind of a destination for Republican candidates hoping to, you know, get in front of his audience and run for office. And so, you know, even though Donald Trump lost in 2020, you know, his influence uh, is still obviously uh, really wide and significant on the Republican party. Um, and you can see that in different, you know, Republican primaries happening all over the midterm map in Ohio uh, and the governor's race in Arizona, uh, Pennsylvania. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, if this QAnon conspiracy phenomenon continues to grow uh, as Trump's distance from the White House, you know, increases uh, since 2020. Right. And we know that uh, former President Trump does plan to make a return to the campaign trail. And we'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens then as well. Stephanie Murray for us. Stephanie, thanks very much. Thank you.